Hello, I want to talk to you today about getting creative with your thesis or dissertation. I submitted my own doctoral thesis in, I think it was 2006. I really wanted to write my thesis creatively, but there was no precedent at that time and my supervisors thought it was too much of a risk. So I ended up with the standard kind of brick of prose. It wasn't badly written. My examiner said he thought it was well written, so that was kind of him. But it could have been much more engaging, I think, to read. Now though, luckily, there's lots of precedent. I'm going to tell you about some examples which might be useful for you to check out if you want to get creative with your own thesis or dissertation. So one example is Anne Harris. She studied the educational experiences of Sudanese refugee women in Australia. And she made seven short films and wrote seven chapters. And the way that her thesis was experienced was one film followed by one chapter, then a second film followed by the second chapter and so on. So she interspersed film and text in a creative and unusual way to give a more full and engaging experience of her doctoral dissertation. Then Nick Susanis in America he was studying the importance of visual thinking in teaching and learning, and he wrote his thesis as a graphic novel. It's called Unflattening, and it's been published by Harvard University Press, if you want to check it out yourself. It's a beautiful piece of work. Now, clearly, not all of us have the skills to create an entire graphic novel for our thesis. But equally clearly, he's done it, so it can be done, and I know of other people now who are following in his footsteps. This isn't all about the social sciences and the arts, though. There's a pure maths doctoral dissertation written by an American woman, Piper Harron, which is all about um, lattices and equations and things that are really utterly beyond my ken. And yet I've read this thesis and enjoyed it. I say I've read it. The pages of equations are very pretty. I didn't exactly read them because I can't read equations. But the text, there are some sections that are written three ways for lay people like myself, for Haran's peers, and for her professors and her examiners. Same text, but written in three different registers, if you like, to make it more accessible. There are jokes, there are comic strips. It's very readable and very entertaining, even though I didn't really understand what it was all about. Then there are web-based dissertations. The first of these was um, Saliha Bhava in, uh, back in 2001, created a web-based dissertation with web pages, PDFs, short videos, blog posts, um, and a more recent one by Rebecca Zak in 2014. And what's interesting about these dissertations is there's no clear beginning and end. The, the reader or the audience finds, you find your own way through moving from one thing to another, following links, um, following paths. So, it's different from a printed, the sort of printed brick that I came up with, which had a very clear beginning, introduction, chapter one, la la la. Um, and that, I think, is, is interesting. Then Spencer Harrison in Canada is an artist and a gay rights activist. And he painted his thesis on the outside of a circus tent. That also is a way of going about things that doesn't necessarily have a beginning, middle and an end, because of course, a circus tent can be approached from any angle, it's circular. And um, that was a very interesting way to go about being creative. I suspect he also had to write some stuff for his examiners as well. But there are lots of other options. There's textile art, there are soundscapes, there are suitcases you can pack with things to create a thesis. There's performance, um, which doesn't only have to be used in performance subjects like dance or theatre, but can be used, performative elements at least, can be used in um, creating and presenting a dissertation or thesis in pretty much any discipline or subject. If you want to take a creative approach to your own thesis or dissertation, you will need to build an academic argument for doing this to convince your supervisors that it's a good idea. And one thing that will help you with that is my book on creative research methods, because there are loads of examples of creative approaches to research that people have already done and written about so that you can cite them. And this helps to convince supervisors and indeed to reassure examiners that this is a good idea. Also, check whether your university has an alternative format policy 
for submitting a thesis or dissertation. If it doesn't, ask if they'll create one. The University of Exeter in the UK has a good one online that you could offer as a precedent um, because you'll need to be sure that you are able to submit your thesis to your university. Don't go ahead and create it and then find out they won't accept it. Figure out all the rules first so that you can be sure that you're working within them. And I think you can do this.